Hey everybody, welcome back. My entitled ex is demanding that I pay child support for a kid that isn't mine. <laughs> Some years ago, I dated a girl. The relationship was bad. She was very controlling and abusive. It ended up really bad and we broke up. I kept going on with my life and after some years, I got a decent job, enough to solve all my needs. I have a comfortable life and I have some savings. The thing is, a couple months after getting my job, my ex contacted me. She first asked me to talk. I believe she may wanted to reconnect or something, but she showed up with a five-year-old child claiming he was my son and demanding child support. I didn't believe her, but the child's age matched the time since we cut contact. I got advice from a lawyer, a friend of mine, to try and solve this out of the court. Uh, did you like take a DNA test? Like, how do we know? How do we know? Is he okay? I offered to take responsibility, pay all the costs, and be an active part of the kid's life. Only after a DNA test. You just took a DNA test, found out that child's not yours. <laughs> Is it in poor taste to quote Lizzo? <laughs> it might be. Everyone was okay with this, except for my ex. Now why would that be? Couldn't possibly be that she's worried about what the outcome will be. Oh, cause she cheated. She acted offended and demanded to just give her the money she deserved. No, not without proper confirmation that that is your child. She used all the excuses she could, even contacted my family and told them I was trying to avoid taking responsibility of her child. I find it interesting that she contacted you right after you suddenly have money and a comfortable life. When she ran out of excuses and the DNA test was finally made, surprise, I'm not the father. You are not. She was so mad with the result and cried about the money, saying it was unfair and she deserved it, but she didn't accomplish anything. Like, just go to the real daddy. Like, wh 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 like, why don't you just go to the real dad? Oh, right, because she's in it for the money. Money. Moving on to last week, there was a little party at my parents' house. My brother, a friend, and I were talking and my brother started to joke about the situation with my ex. My friend and I are starting to joke about it too. Some of our comments were a little dark and bad, but we were far away from the rest of the people. Literally, we were on the opposite side of the house and nobody else could hear us. At least, that's what we thought. We were laughing like crazies when my sister appeared very angry and pushed me against the wall. She spied us and heard our conversation and she was very mad. She started to yell at us about how horrible people we were for mocking a poor woman. I mean, you can sympathize with her situation, but not with the fact that she's trying to get money out of you. Few hours later, when the party ended, she asked me to go to the kitchen with our parents and she said how awful I was for the previous situation. Apparently my ex had been in contact with her and she believed her version and that was her way to have an intervention. So I'm sorry, she, be your, wait, your sister believed your ex despite there is a DNA test and factual proof proving that you are not the father. Am I understanding that correctly? My brother and I were like, are you serious? When she started to say how I forced my ex to be a single mother. No, 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 no. That's not on you. That's not your fault. Hell no. I have the moral obligation to help her. Wait a second. So this is also the ex that was like abusive and controlling toward you? What? My dad only said that we maybe were being too cruel, making jokes about her, but that I wasn't responsible for that kid, period. My mom then surprised all of us when she said, even if the kid is not yours, you're making more than enough money to support that child, you should have helped her. Okay, no, see, maybe if you had known the child before, and maybe if you'd had a good relationship with your ex, if you felt the moral obligation to help this person, she was good to you, you know, maybe you loved the child, something like that, but you don't know this kid. This woman was awful to you. You don't have a moral obligation to help anybody in this situation. Not your baby, not your problem. <laughs> Since then, I've been receiving texts. My dad and brother are on my side, saying I'm not responsible for her, but my sister is telling me how horrible I am for ruining their lives. Okay, listen, you didn't ruin their lives, okay? However, your ex got pregnant. Maybe it wasn't the most ideal situation, but that is not your fault. My mom said it's your decision and I respect it. I'm disappointed you ended up being so selfish. 
I'm sorry, did your ex like go to like the women in your family with like some sob story and like crying and stuff to like get them to sympathize with her or something? I fail to understand like, d does your family not know how horrible she was to you? I'm aware she doesn't deserve my money and I'm not planning to give her any, but the constant harassment of my sister trying to guilt me is just exhausting. Uh, okay, so <laughs> why is your sister so involved in this decision? I, I don't see why she feels so strongly about this. Tell your sister if she's so concerned, she should give Give your ex money since she has so much to do with conceiving the child as you did. <laughs> That's so true. Oh, I'm sorry. You feel bad for their situation? By all means, like, let's see that checkbook, honey. It's not just that. She cheated on him when the child was conceived while they were together, putting him at risk of STDs and then tried to scam him claiming the child is his. So no, she does not deserve a penny from him. I really don't understand why your sister is being so weird about this. Plus, why five years? Yeah, why did she wait five years? You you didn't even know this child existed. Did the baby daddy bounce all of a sudden? The timing is suspicious for an inciting event to trigger the contact. Yeah, that was something definitely happened and it says OP got a job. <laughs> she smelled it, she smelled the money. Just because you have money does not make people entitled to your money. We have an update. It's been a while. After my last post, I read all the comments and decided to show them to my mother. We had to talk about the situation. Again, she started on my ex's side, but after reading the post and all the comments and opinions, she realized she was wrong. Well, that took a while. <laughs> I think the thing that hurt her the most was all the doubts about if she cheated on my dad and I wasn't his son. Oh, and that was the reason that she was on her side. Oh. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, like it could be a case of projection. I just fail to understand why they're putting a woman who treated their son so badly above their own son. Like what? She told me she believed my ex because she was always so nice and kind with her and that she decided to not believe me when I told her all the things that she did to me during the relationship because a good girl like her could never do something like that. So I must be lying. Oh, absolutely not. Hell no. What kind of mom is this? Honestly, if I tell my mom one negative thing about a friend or a boyfriend, they're done. They're literally dead to her. <laughs> I inherited that. <laughs> if my friend tells me something bad about an ex-boyfriend or a boyfriend they're currently dating or a friend that treats them poorly, dead. Dead to me, blocked. Doesn't matter if they were nice to me. After that, she apologized to me, we are good now. On the other side, my sister, at first she decided she wouldn't talk to me until I take responsibility, but after some days, I talked with her. She's totally on her side, even after showing everything. She said that none of that matters because a woman's word goes first and that's all the proof anyone could need. I'm sorry. <laughs> Being a liar is not gender specific. Also, she said, even if you're not the biological father, you have an effective responsibility with her. No, you don't. So you must be man enough to take charge of them and start acting like a real man. She was a lost cause. No, like no. It would have been different if you had known that child since it was a baby. You know, I have friends that had, you know, an ex-wife that knew the child very well. And, and you know, after they got you know, after they separated, then they felt kind of like a responsibility to be in that child's life as a father figure. Like he didn't have to do that, but like, I can understand that. You had no idea this child existed. She was awful to you. She probably cheated on you. You have literally no moral obligation to this child and to this mother. About my ex, I did some research and found out that shortly after we broke up, she started dating another guy. Or maybe she was cheating on me before, I'm not sure. They broke up some weeks later and she had multiple dates until she found out she was pregnant. I also found out that she had been trying to find a father for her kid for the last two years. I was next on the list. But it looks like she's desperate now because she was never that aggressive with anyone before. Cause she smells the money, smelling the money, sees your life and wants it. Now the reason for this post. Some days ago, my ex and my sister came to my workplace. Hell no, throw the whole sister away. They made a big sign with my face that says he abandoned his child an irresponsible father. You are not the father! You're not! <laughs> 
They started a bunch of drama, saying all their BS. Their intention was to shame me and use the social pressure to force me to take charge. They literally said it. To not make the story too long, they were taken out of the place. I got problems for the scandal, even after showing all the proof and legal documents that showed they were lying. I was told that this better never happen again or I will be fired. I mean, I fail to understand how they expect you to provide for your illegitimate son if you don't have a job. After I contacted my friend, the lawyer, and we are now redacting a very long detailed paper against them, my ex and my sister too, they went too far, and now I'm going against them with everything. Maybe that will scare them enough to leave me alone. Like, I just, I fail to understand why your sister is on this woman's side. We have one final update. First of all, I'm not allowed to talk about the lawsuit. The most I can share to you is that my ex was extremely freaked out when she knew about it. Good. That's good. People always like to act a fool until there's lawyers involved and then they shut up real quick. <laughs> nice little cease and desist. She's now begging to drop it. She offered to take back everything she said to never bother or contact me again. She tried to guilt me into saying that I would be ruining her and her son's life, but honestly, I don't care. I got tired of being the good guy a long time ago. She messed with me, now I'm fighting back. As you should, babe. Don't take that. You can only be the good guy for so long until someone just pushes you so far over the edge that you gotta push back, babe, you gotta push back. And for my sister, the lawsuit at first only made her worse. As her attempt to shame me and my job didn't work as well as she wanted, she moved it to social media, spreading her BS about me, abandoning my child or not taking responsibility and exposing my legal actions like acts of censorship and misogyny. I, I like, no comprende. Do we not understand facts? At the end, that will be the worst for her. Not only because I can dismiss her defamation easily, but also there's more evidence to our favor. He is defaming me! While also defaming you? <laughs> This is dumb as hell, what a spectacle. If you're ever involved in a legal dispute about someone, the stupidest thing that you can do is post about it on social media. Talk about it publicly, post about it on social media. That is literally the dumbest thing that you could possibly do. Recently, we had a posada at my parents' home. Every year we use this excuse to make a big family party before Christmas. I had my doubts because I didn't want to be near my sister, but after some relatives assured me that she wouldn't be there, I decided to go. Big mistake, she was there. Mom decided that despite everything that happened, I was taking all of this too far. So she wanted us to meet to solve this problem as a family. I tried to get out of there the moment I realized what was intended, but some relatives tried to stop me while my mom cried that I needed to stop. That I was tearing apart the family and needed to learn to forgive and let go. I just find it so funny that like, whenever there's like a family altercation, that's not your fault. You are the one that's being told that you're in the wrong. When none of this would have even existed if she and your sister didn't try and force you to provide for a child that's not your own. I realized that despite everything, even knowing I was telling the truth, she was still on my sister's side. I got out of there saying that I'm not attending any family event ever again if she's there and don't ever think of trying this BS again. At this point, almost all my family knows what she did. Some of them think my sister is crazy. Uh, yeah, I would, yeah, maybe uh, a little bit. <laughs> Some think she is crazy, but I'm taking it too far. A couple days ago, my mom invited me to spend Christmas with them. I didn't want to go after what she did, but I decided to give her a chance after she swore that it wouldn't happen again. But not only did she plan to do it again, my brother warned me that this time she intended to lock me in until I forgave my sister and stopped the nonsense. I called my mom and told her that I was done with her and my sister. Don't talk to me until she realized she supported the wrong person and to apologize. I don't need to say how many times she tried to call me in the following hours and all the drama she made when I didn't show up. But again, I'm tired of being the good guy. As a 59 year old woman, mom and grandmother, it has always astonished me that any woman would attempt this, especially when it's so easy to find out the truth with the help of a DNA test, literally. Like there is no refuting that proof. None whatsoever. Not only are they lying to their children, but trying to trap a man into paying support for a child that isn't his is completely despicable. Agreed. That's a big hail no from me. You're also depriving the child of ever knowing who their real father is. That's a good point. But maybe it's not about knowing who the father is. I feel like it's about the money. All right, I got one more for you and I promise it's worth the wait. Thank you for sticking around. I really, really appreciate you. Oh, you need some more, you're so cute. Entitled ex-girlfriend, wants the engagement ring I gave her because she broke up with me before I could propose. Gets arrested 
for her troubles. A while back, I was dating this girl for roughly two years. I thought things were going great, but apparently she was just dating me because she liked to tell people that she was in a relationship. I know a few people like that. No, that's how it went with her. The way she described me was too immature, decent in bed, and honestly not worth the rest of my life. Exact words she said to a friend after we broke up. I went out and I bought a ring. Had this entire thing planned out to propose to her. However, she was suddenly not available for several weeks in a row. Oh yeah, the slow breakup, eh? Slow breakup. Well, my fears rang true as she suddenly showed up at my place one day. She acted like everything was normal as we talked and she was grabbing everything that was hers. Oh, like not even like a conversation or anything? <laughs> About halfway through, I just kind of looked at her and said, don't forget your hair dryer. It would be awkward to have to come back over after you dump me. This sparked a long and awkward conversation where she was fake crying. I again realized right then and there that I was an idiot. You're not an idiot, babe, you're not. She's an idiot. The way she acted, the way she spoke, and the way she treated me just screamed that she did not care. I was devastated, but seeing her made me angry. I realized she was lying to me this entire time. I don't understand how, how people can be in relationships with people that they don't like. Like, I cannot stand people. The only people I can stand are the people that I actively choose to have in my life. If I don't like you, you're not gonna be in my life. End of story, let alone in a relationship with someone that I don't like. Hell no. About a month later, a friend of hers calls me up, asked if she could come over to talk. I asked why. She said my ex pissed her off and she wanted to tell me some things. My mind goes to horrifying things like she needs to warn me, see a doctor, things like that. Well, when her friend came over and we chatted for a while, her friend was beyond pissed off, talking about how ending the relationship pissed her off. So her way to get back at her friend was to sleep with her ex-boyfriend. Me being in my mental state, I said yes? <laughs> Wait, oh, okay, uh, sure. <laughs> More like I said, uh, yeah, sure, we can do that if you really want to. I mean, like, I'm not, like, opposed to it or anything, but, uh, like, only if you want to. <laughs> so she ends up staying over for a few days as we get to talking about my ex. I tell her about the ring, and she had the best idea to get back at my ex. Let's lay down in bed and post a pic of ourselves with the ring between us. Oh, oh, gosh, oh, oh, that's messy. Yeah, I thought it was a terrible idea, but I wanted my ex to feel like crap, so... There you go. <laughs> Not even two hours later, my ex was at the door. We posted the picture at like 11 a.m. and she was at my place at 1240 or something. Right off the bat, she tried to act like breaking up with me was a mistake. Huh? She said that I was the best boyfriend she ever had. She was getting scared with how serious things were getting. So seeing a picture of the ring suddenly made her want to get more serious? She said she made a terrible mistake in breaking up with me. Well, duh. Well, her friend immediately goes into a rant about my ex, saying she was manipulative and that neither of us would believe this sob story she was giving. Gotta say, I'm very glad her friend was there because my stupid was believing my ex. I reminded her of how she treated me when she broke up and that she should go home. She was wasting her time. Well, now she brought up the ring. She said she was owed it under the law and that rings are gifts and that I cannot take it back. But you didn't give it to her. You didn't give it to her. She broke up with you before you could give it to her. In unison, me and her friend said I never gave it to her. We both looked at each other and laughed <laughs> as the absurdity of the situation was getting outrageous. She said she was owed that ring and she was not leaving without it. Girl, you you some kind of crazy. Like, this is crazy as hell, bro. Get out of here. At about this time, a police officer came up the stairs wanting to know what the trouble was. I guess we made enough noise that the neighbors called the police. The female officer asked what the situation was. Everyone was trying to talk at once. The officer shut us down, pointed to my ex and asked her what the problem was. She said she was trying to pick up her stuff after we broke up. She asked me if that were true. I explained the situation of how my ex broke up with me before I had the chance to propose and she was never given the ring. Throughout the conversation, two more officers showed up, one a supervisor. The whole story was explained like four times. It's a good thing that her friend was there too because like it's her word against yours, but because you have a witness, you know? At one point, my ex said the money from the ring would let her pay off her car. Ah, there it is. Well, she should have thought of that before she broke up with you. Ever see a moment where someone says something so outrageous that everyone looks at them in utter disgust? <laughs>
I responded with the ring isn't expensive. I bought it used off a website and I reminded her I'm in IT tech. So this wasn't a ring that was 10 to 12K, more like one to 1.5K. Oh yeah, did that change her opinion? Suddenly she doesn't want it? The anger and rage that came over her face was immediately apparent to everyone. She stepped forward and punched me in the chest in front of the police? Oh, hell no, she for the streets, honey. Kicked me before being tackled to the ground by the female officer. Girl, you, you some kind of stupid, you, you dumb. The supervisor on scene told us to go inside while they get her under control. We did, about 10 minutes later, they came back. They wanted my statement. I told them I didn't want to press charges against her, but they said, yeah, it doesn't work like that. We saw it, so it's being processed. <laughs> She ended up getting a misdemeanor offense for it. Bro, that is nuts. I need a second to recover from that show. Just for the record, in case anybody's confused. Engagement rings are the legal exception to the gift rule. In most places, it's a gift in contemplation of marriage. She would have to give it back anyways. Learn that from Judge Judy. Supreme Court made a final ruling. The ring has to go back to the buyer or original owner if the engagement was broken. But if the wedding happened, even if it was a family heirloom, it stays with the person who wears the ring. Right, that's fair, except there was no wedding. There wasn't even an engagement. This girl is so unbelievably delulu and entitled. You dodged a bazooka of a woman, my friend. But there's something very satisfying about how that ended. I'm not gonna lie. Subscribe!